This video is about library resources that can be used to complete assignments, and in particular, assignments that involve exploring problems. By the end of the video, you will have learned how to identify different types of resources so that you can select them appropriately, use advanced search techniques so that you can efficiently find the resources, and make use of citation help guides and tools so that you can credit your sources and avoid plagiarism. Throughout this video, we'll use one sample situation and problem. This could be a real-life situation or a situation you're examining for an assignment. Here's the situation. As part of your job, you are responsible for setting up professional development opportunities for staff at a nonprofit organization. You've been asked to develop an online learning program using learning objects. You could brainstorm different problems that could arise from this situation, but let's focus on one. Staff are busy and sometimes resistant to trying new things. They're used to in-person training. How can you motivate them to try out and complete the learning objects? First, ask yourself what knowledge you already have and what you need to know. Do you have knowledge related to the organization, the people who work there, or motivating adults? Do you need to know more about learning objects or online learning? Once you've determined the knowledge you need, it's time to consider what resources will help you get that knowledge. This is where library resources come in. First, let's take a look at different types of resources. We all rely on informal sources of information, or non-scholarly information, such as websites, blogs, discussion forums, articles published in popular magazines, etc. But for certain information needs, there are scholarly or academic sources, such as books, articles published in journals, some websites, etc. What are the advantages of using scholarly sources? It's easier to determine quality. Researchers have to provide evidence to support their arguments. Many journals are peer-reviewed, which means that experts in the field review and approve articles before they're published. Articles also tend to have a consistent format, and that format often relates to problem solving. First, the problem is identified and the author offers a possible solution or a theory. The author outlines what others have said about the problem, previous research. The author describes his or her methods for testing the solution, or theory, and then discusses the results. Suggestions for future research are given, and finally, the author lists all of the sources he or she used, also known as citations or references. So, how do you find these scholarly resources? In our everyday lives, many of us start an information search with Google. But scholarly sources are often not available for free on the web. You may find some that are open access, or in other words, they've been made available for free legally. Google Scholar does provide access to scholarly sources, mainly journal articles. When you search Google Scholar, you will get a mix of results. Some results have links to the full text of the article. These are articles that are available for free or open access. Some results do not have links, so you can't read the article. These articles are not available for free. However, there is a way to link up Google Scholar with the library's databases. Choose UIT as your library under Settings. The library pays for books, ebooks, and subscriptions to journals within databases. Generally, these are materials you won't find for free elsewhere. The library also links to open access materials. Before you start searching for books or journal articles, it's useful to brainstorm keywords. Here is the problem in the form of a question. How can adults be encouraged to complete professional development learning objects? Pull out the most important words. These are your concepts. In this example, they are adults, encouraged, professional development, and learning objects. Think of different ways of expressing those concepts. Authors may not use exactly the same terms as you have. Let's use some of these keywords to search for books and ebooks. 
Go to the library homepage. For simple searches, you can use the quick search bar. To search for ebooks only, select UIT eResources. For more complex searches, go to the advanced search option. Books tend to cover broader topics than articles. For example, a book might be about online learning. An article could be about online learning in nursing courses in Nova Scotia. Let's start with just two key concepts. You can use the truncation symbol to search for multiple endings of words. Usually it's an asterisk, but our catalog uses a dollar sign. Use quotation marks to search for words together, as a phrase. We combine keywords with Boolean operators. These are commands understood by catalogs, databases, etc. Use AND between different concepts when you want all of them to be included in every result. Use OR between similar terms, or terms that refer to the same concept. You're asking the database to retrieve either one term or the other. Searching for articles in a database is similar. Here I've used some of the same keywords that I used in the catalog, but since articles cover more specific topics, I've added more concepts. Not only do I want an article about adults and online learning, I want it to cover professional development, or in other words, learning within the workplace. And I want the article to address motivation. Another way of saying that is encouragement. Databases have many search options. For example, you can search for more current articles. You can also search for articles in peer-reviewed journals only. The library provides access to hundreds of databases. How do you know which one to choose? The library has developed subject guides to recommend resources for different subjects, programs, and courses. Choose the subject guide that's relevant to your topic. For example, you might choose education, computer science, or multidisciplinary and general. Here are some examples of databases listed on those guides. You may need to use more than one database to find all of the articles you need. Once you've found some articles that look relevant, you'll need to find the full text so that you can read them. Sometimes you'll see a direct link to the article, maybe a PDF icon, or a reference to full text. For other articles, you'll see the Find It at UOIT icon. Follow the prompts until you get to the text of the article. Find It at UIT allows you to search all UIT databases for the text of the article. The Article Citation Locator is a similar tool. If you're looking for a specific article, type in as much information about it as you have to see if the article is available at UIT. Our last topic is citation help. There are a number of resources that can help you cite your sources in the proper format. But first, why is it important to cite? Cite your sources to prove that you have done the research to support your argument and opinions. Make it clear which ideas are yours and which ones belong to others. Avoid plagiarism. Cite your sources with all the required details so that someone reading your work could track down the exact book, article, or other source that you used. Scholarly articles cite their sources in the same way. The library has created citation help guides for APA, MLA, and legal citation styles. They're available on our website. The Purdue Online Writing Lab, or OWL, website is also a great resource with a section on APA style and lots of examples. You can consult the official style manuals, such as the style manual of the APA. 
It's available in the library as well as in most public and post-secondary libraries. Finally, you can get help from a librarian in person, over the phone, or by email. You can also get help, particularly with writing, from UIT's Academic Success Center.